Nuking a Volcano A volcano is a vent in the Earth's crust, or on another planet or satellite, where eruptions of molten rock, hot rock fragments, and hot gases occur. These eruptions are a powerful display of Earth's strength. While they are fascinating to watch, they can also lead to devastating loss of life and property, especially in densely populated areas around the world. This can be preceded by the release of steam and gas from small vents on the ground. So, what would happen if we nuked a volcano? Could we use nuclear weapons to fight fire with fire and prevent a volcanic eruption from happening? Or would this approach make the situation even worse? Let's find out. What if we nuked a volcano? Volcanoes are a powerful force of nature that can cause widespread destruction. There are about 1,500 active volcanoes worldwide, with more than 10% located in the United States. Is there a way to stop them before they erupt? Could we use nuclear weapons to fight fire with fire and prevent a volcanic eruption from happening? Or would this approach make the situation even worse? While volcanoes are fascinating, they can also be terrifying due to their destructive capabilities. Is there a way to combat them effectively? Using a nuclear bomb similar to the one dropped on Hiroshima during World War II could potentially stop a volcano from erupting. To begin, scientists would need to identify warning signs of an impending eruption, such as small earthquakes, steam and gas emissions, and bulging on the volcano's surface. However, predicting when a volcano will erupt is challenging, and it remains largely guesswork. Assuming that scientists can pinpoint an active volcano on the verge of eruption, quick coordination between scientists and the military would be essential to attempt to prevent the catastrophe. Ideally, there would be a few days' notice before the eruption, allowing for a smooth evacuation process and avoiding traffic congestion. Once the area is cleared, a team of experts would analyze the volcano's structure to identify weak points that could be targeted effectively. This coordinated effort could potentially save lives and prevent widespread destruction caused by volcanic eruptions. Would there be a chain reaction of other volcanoes? In the past hundred years, studies on volcanoes have revealed that some volcanoes can be connected even if they do not share the same magmatic reservoir. However, the exact process is still not completely understood. Recent research in Nature's Scientific Reports journal shows that Mauna Loa and Kilauea Two volcanoes on Hawaii's Big Island have a dynamic relationship where changes in one volcano can affect the other. Scientists from Spanish volcanic research institutes, Instituto Tecnológico y de Energías Renovables, ITER, and Instituto Volcanológico de Canarias, INVOLCAN, collaborated with the Instituto per il Rilevamento Electromagnético del Ambiente, IREA CNR, in Italy to use independent component analysis of Envisat data to identify complex ground deformation patterns for the two volcanoes, demonstrating their elastic interaction. There is no clear proof that an eruption at one volcano can cause an eruption at a volcano that is hundreds of kilometers away or on a different continent. While there have been a few instances of simultaneous eruptions from volcanoes located within about 10 kilometers of each other, it is hard to say if one eruption led to the other. Volcanoes that share the same magma reservoirs can sometimes cause unrest at each other. For example, the 1912 eruption of Alaska's Novarupta volcano was fueled by magma from a reservoir beneath Mount Katmai, which was 10 kilometers away. Mount Katmai did not erupt, but it collapsed into the emptied magma chamber below it after Novarupta's eruption. Some individual volcanoes or vents are seen as part of a larger volcano complex. In these cases, one eruption may not exactly trigger a nearby vent to erupt, but moving magma can make its way to the surface at multiple locations. For instance, Tavervur and Vulcan cones are vents within Rabaul Caldera in Papua New Guinea that erupted around the same time in 1994. However, not all nearby volcanoes exhibit this behavior. Hawaii's Kilauea volcano and Mauna Loa volcano are only 33 kilometers apart, yet they have different magma reservoirs. Despite their closeness, an eruption at one does not seem to cause an eruption at the other. To create a devastating nuclear explosion, a bomb needs to detonate with precise timing to start a chain reaction in its radioactive core. Once this reaction begins, it cannot be stopped. However, if a nuclear bomb were placed in a chamber of magma, it would completely melt, 
including the shell and core. For the bomb to trigger a reaction and cause a massive explosion, it would need to be detonated above the volcano's mouth or somehow transported into the center of the magma chamber. If the volcano is a cone-shaped stratovolcano, the bomb may cause some damage to the top but would not likely cause an eruption. The bomb's blast radius is too small to reach the pressurized magma chamber that leads to an eruption. The bomb would create a fireball that destroys everything close by and forms a mushroom cloud. Beyond this, there would be a high-pressure air blast that can knock down buildings, followed by radiation exposure, which would be lethal to anyone in the vicinity. Even further out, thermal radiation would cause severe burns. An eruption could occur if magma is already near the volcano's mouth and requires only a small amount of pressure to trigger. However, the most catastrophic scenario would involve the bomb being suddenly transported into the magma chamber, located between 1 to 10 kilometers, 0.6 to 6.2 miles underground. Would it set off the one volcano we nuked? If you were to drop a nuclear bomb into an erupting volcano, it would not result in a nuclear explosion. Instead, the bomb would melt due to the extreme heat of the lava. This is because a nuclear bomb requires conventional explosives to trigger, and the lava's heat is unlikely to set them off simultaneously. If the bomb were to explode, it would be a small-scale blast compared to the volcanic eruption. The lava that engulfs the bomb may become slightly more radioactive, but otherwise, no significant consequences would occur. Using a nuclear bomb to induce an eruption in a dormant volcano depends on its readiness to erupt. If the magma and gases are near the surface, a powerful nuclear warhead could trigger an explosive eruption. However, if the volcano is not close to erupting, the bomb will not cause a full-scale eruption. It might cause minor changes to the mountain's summit but will not lead to a volcanic explosion. What if we nuked all the volcanoes at once? It is often better not to dwell on the sheer number of nuclear weapons in existence. Nuclear weapons are extremely powerful and have the ability to destroy whole cities and potentially bring about the end of human civilization in the event of a full-scale nuclear war. But what if all the world's nuclear weapons were launched simultaneously? The strength of a nuclear weapon is usually measured in kilotons, which is equivalent to thousands of tons of TNT. For instance, the bomb dropped on Hiroshima was estimated to be around 16 kilotons, or 16,000 tons of TNT. The W87 warhead on the Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missile has a yield of 300 kilotons. The B83 nuclear freefall bomb which is carried by the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber, has a yield of up to 1.2 megatons, or 1,200 kilotons. Individually, each of these weapons has the potential to cause immense destruction. The global arsenal would be sufficient to eliminate 3 billion people with 1,500 nuclear weapons remaining unused. When stored together in a single, vast warehouse in the South American jungle, these weapons collectively possess the power of up to 15 volcanic eruptions similar to the one at Krakatoa. Imagine a scenario where all the active volcanoes on Earth suddenly erupted at the same time. What if the news channels were reporting this catastrophic event? Would our planet be able to withstand the aftermath of ash, molten lava, and scorching gases? How high would the ash reach in the atmosphere? Would there be anyone left to share the news with the world? Not every volcano would be a threat. Volcanoes that have not erupted in the last 10,000 years, known as extinct volcanoes, do not have any magma left to erupt again. Currently, there are around 10 to 20 volcanoes erupting somewhere on Earth at any given time. On land, there are a total of 1,500 active volcanoes, with an unknown number of them located underwater. Among them, 20 on land are classified as supervolcanoes, with Yellowstone being the largest one. What if all these volcanoes erupted simultaneously? What would the consequences of this disaster be? If all the active volcanoes on Earth erupted at once, there would be numerous explosive eruptions. These explosive eruptions would release a mixture of rocks, ash, and gas, causing devastation in the nearby regions. Escaping from the path of a giant hot cloud would be impossible, as rocks as hot as 1,000 degrees Celsius 1,830 degrees Fahrenheit, would be moving at speeds exceeding 700 kph, 450 miles per hour. However, 
What would nuking all the volcanoes at once cause? Could this cease the massive chain reaction of explosions? Simple out, no. This would be disastrous and make things worse. This action might set off large eruptions, possibly releasing more damaging gases and ash into the air, causing worldwide climate disturbances, ash fallout, and even possibly setting off earthquakes and tsunamis. It is not a suggested or practical method for managing volcanic activity. Not all volcanoes would erupt with such intensity. Some volcanoes would release magma steadily on the ground, known as effusive eruptions. If your local volcano had this type of eruption, you would be considered fortunate. But this stroke of luck wouldn't last for long. Other eruptions would send ash plumes high into the sky, traveling thousands of kilometers and covering the earth in a thick layer of ash. These ash clouds would block out sunlight, resulting in complete darkness across the planet. Without sunlight, photosynthesis would be impossible, leading to the death of all plants, crops, and animals. Even if crops managed to survive without sunlight, they would be destroyed by acidic rains. Since volcanic ash consists of tiny rock particles, it would be extremely heavy. If a substantial amount of ash fell on your roof, your house would collapse under the weight. So what are your thoughts? What do you think will happen if a volcano is nuked? Let us know your answers in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more what-if videos. Until next time, stay curious and questioning.